Hey there everyone, this is Michael Dougal, your Greater Toronto Area Real Estate Resource, and I'm very excited to present to you some of the differences between the market right now versus 2023. We know that we're in somewhat of a down market, perhaps a balanced market or a buyer's market due to the fact that the interest rates have increased so significantly. And although the average price is somewhat similar to where it was about a year ago, there's actually quite a few differences in the market which aren't being talked about, and I'm gonna share those with you so you can capitalize whether you're a buyer or a seller. If you are considering buying or selling make sure to call me, call me, call me. And if you're a real estate agent looking for a great brokerage to help you grow your business, make sure to reach out to me to learn more about eXp Realty. And the first thing we want to take a look at is the average price and how it's changed across different areas as well as different property style. And as for this chart here, we can see that the average price is just down slightly. Detached homes barely changed. Semi-detached homes down by 3.3%. Townhouses down 3.4%. And condo apartments down 2.2%. However, looking at this data here, we can actually see that the benchmark price is down 5% throughout the past 12 months. And that's because benchmark price takes into account like what is the most commonly sold property and how has that property appreciated or depreciated over time. And if you look at this data here, we can see that after 1999, the prices just only came up until 2017, where 2017 to 2018, we saw about a 30% decrease with respect to the average price. So now it'll be really interesting to see if this year continues this way and if the average price actually ends up less than what it was last year, despite us having lower interest interest rates. The second thing we're going to take a look at is days on market because this is quite different than where it was about a year ago. We can see based on this chart over here, we're looking at the average days on market for different price points that were reported across sales in July 2024 versus July 2023. So we can see that for properties between 250 to 500,000, the days on market was close to 30 days, even at a price range as being that low. And if we compare the gray bars here, which represents 2023 versus the blue bars here, we can see that the blue bars are are all pretty much 100% plus more, meaning that listings are taking far more longer to sell. Look at the price range between 2.5 million to 3 million. Last year, it was reported at about 15 days on the market, whereas right now they're taking 25 days on average to sell. And next, we'll take a look at active listings because this is probably the biggest talking point this year. It's that the number of listings is at a record high and we've seen the highest number of active listings than we have in the past decade. So when we have a lot of supply and we don't have a lot of demand, then usually that results in us having more of a buyer's market and we are officially now in a buyer's market here in the greater Toronto area which means that if you're a buyer this is your opportunity to take advantage you can look at a number of properties you're not in a rush being in a frantic bidding war you can actually negotiate an offer to your liking meaning you're going to negotiate a good price for yourself but also the conditions could be in your favor with respect to inspection with respect to financing with respect to you finding a closing date which actually accommodates your needs versus how it was before when you were pretty much structuring the offer to the seller's liking just hoping and praying that it was accepted well, and that's reflected in this data here where we're looking at the number of new listings that are reported each month. So we can see that we're comparing uh, 2024 to the previous several years. And we can see that the 2024 orange bar, that represents the number of new listings which came up. And this is specifically illustrating how many new listings came up each month in that specific year. And we can see that orange is the highest both in July and June, meaning that we had the most number of new listings. And on top of that, we also have the active listings which are also for sale. So this doesn't tell the whole story. This is just new listings which come up for sale. The problem is we already have all this active inventory and if more listings continue to come to the market, then we're really going to be in a buyer's market and a lot of these homeowners are going to be struggling to sell their property. And that's because as for this chart here, we can see the number of sales which have taken place each month. So we have a lot of listings, but we don't have many sales given that the orange is actually the lowest throughout this chart. And as shown, 2021 had the highest number of sales. Yes, they had quite a few listings up for sale, but most of the inventory was being sold. But the other couple of changes changes we're seeing in the marketplace is that there's far less new construction this year. It seems that builders are more so opting for like low rise homes or perhaps detached homes. And it's very concerning for anybody that's purchased a pre-construction property within the past few years and is not able to close on it due to the higher interest rates that are now in effect. So we have seen more assignment transactions take place earlier this year and we'll expect to see more of them moving forward. I've talked more about what an assignment sale is in this video over here. And that's because the people that are assigning their property, they just want their money back from whatever they paid for it. But because the markets come down so considerably, they're very rarely able to do that. In fact, we were able to actually procure a great assignment for less than $100,000, what the original assigner actually purchased the property for. And the other major change we've actually seen this year so far is with respect to the rental market. So rents are no longer increasing. In fact, uh, they're stagnant. Maybe they've come down a little bit. There's far more vacancies. And because of this, it may actually result in less investors purchasing property because we know something about the condo market or a lot of the multifamily market is that 
people are purchasing these properties to rent them out. But if they conclude they can't rent out the property or if they conclude that they'll rent it far less than what they would have expected to get and then that would affect their cap rate, that would mean the investor would no longer be looking to purchase that property. I'd love to know your thoughts about the market and how it compares to a year back. Be sure to share it in the comment section below. If you are considering buying or selling, call me, call me, call me. And if you're a real estate agent, I want you to know that you are safe working with us at eXp Realty. Make sure to reach out to me to learn more about this amazing brokerage and I look forward to seeing you next time.